I woke up like this. I woke up in love. I got a I got a theme for the video, which is like supposedly the big advice on YouTube is have a theme, announce the theme. I'm in love. It had to happen sooner or later. I'm feeling good about it. I'm in love with Shelby Lynn. I'm in love with Dusty Springfield. I did a video a while back about top 10 female vocalists that I think, uh, and not necessarily ones I recorded or worked with. And I somehow, I didn't add Shelby Lynn and Dusty Springfield. And I think for me, Shelby Lynn, besides the fact that I'm obsessed with her and I have a massive crush on her, I think Shelby Lynn's a top five. And the more I look into her career and obsess over her and stalk her she's top five for me i'm gonna have to bounce somebody out i think i might bounce out mariah i don't know thinking about it so it's a little bit of a weekly recap it's a love week it was, it's been a a week of falling in love um my advice if you're into being in the music production business is that you better be in love with it because if you're not in love with it it's it's not going to be for you it's it's not going to be a good thing if you're in love with the hobby of it that's cool that'd be cool if you're in love with you know as as a hobby if you're in love with it there's nothing wrong with that i know i shit on that every once in a while like i don't get it how you could i guess what, what i'm saying is that when you're in it deep if you don't love it, you're you're gonna be screwed because it can it can test you. It can test you. I'm all over the place this week. Like I got I think I have a total of twenty songs to finish up over the next uh let's just say sixteen days. And that de that all depends also on how impatient some of the some of the clients get. So when they start calling saying like, oh, we, you know, we really want that, we want, really want to get that thing uh, uploaded. Like, is there any way we can get it sooner? You know, th that's always going to happen. Then there's the ones that rush you and then they sit on the stuff for six months and you're like, what, what was the urgency besides the fact that you were excited? So yeah, I have that. I have production that I'm doing. Um... Today, of all things, I'm going to somewhere on Long Island to do a cigar podcast. Crazy. Uh, sometimes you do things for friends, you know what I mean? I think I'm going to sneeze at any moment, so there might be a quick edit somewhere along the lines. Pain in the neck for me. Uh had a great live stream. We went four and a half hours on Friday. If you're a member, you can watch it. If you're not a member now, it's too late. So you can catch it live if you're not a member. And I think membership is 99 cents or a dollar. I don't remember which one it is. But um, we talked about a ton of fun stuff. We had a lot of stuff. We had uh, We had an appearance of, if you know, you know. You know what I'm saying? I got um, a copyright warning because I played some video from the layer cake. So the channel, so that that video is not monetized or whatever that means. And I, <clears throat> I still don't even understand totally how that all works. But um, I think what I'm going to do in the future is, I mean, maybe I won't play so much video stuff. I, I, it was literally like, I don't know, a minute and a half of, of video with audio. And somehow whoever owns that movie thinks that <clears throat> they need to uh, keep track of that. I don't know. It's a freaking old movie. What am I? What, what, I don't get it. Uh, I love that. I love it all. I love... Um, Working on new stuff with uh, new artists. It's always interesting trying to teach a new artist how to adapt to a melody change. 
sometimes that can get really, really crazy with a with a new vocalist. Um, you know, because when they they get locked in on something, and you have to try and get them to unlock, uh, it's tricky. You got to, you know, come up with different psychological ways. Like, hey, treat this vocal as a harmony. Don't think of it as your lead so that you can learn this new melody. Um, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. Yesterday was like a little 50-50. I think, you know, as as relationships develop, you know, like producer artist relationships and producer uh, mixer relationships develop, um, you can change course quicker with each other because you can adapt and there's a trust thing that goes on. You got to build that trust. You got to build the love. This one's all about love. I'm gonna. I think I, my thumbnail might be a nice clickbait love theme. See how that goes over. I'm trying to keep track of everything. I've got. I made a good a gear decision. For those of you that are into gear, and I know that you are, I was going on a a bit of a journey. Let's just say, thinking that I want. I have this Akai Max 49 as my controller. It's got 12 pads. It doesn't have 16 levels. That kind of drives me nuts because I miss that from the old days of having my MPC 2000. So I thought, well, what can I do? What can I, how can I reconfigure? Should I get a live two Akai, an MPC live or a live two or an MPC one? Um, should I get a new controller? I started thinking about this Yamaha MX-49 thing. Then I was thinking the Yamaha Reface CP thing, 37 keys. Uh, I, I was like, you know that you know the deal if you've been into the to the gear acquisition syndrome. Um, I went more or less full circle, and now I'm back to the MPC 37. The little red one with the 37 keys, the full MPC in it. I think it's going to make sense. I think I might do a little search on um, where I want to grab it from or how I want to grab it or whatever. I'm not looking to get a free one from Makai. It's just not, it's not really in the playbook. But anyway, that was the gear search, uh, the stream I recapped, the working with artists, changing my vocal top 10 and adding Shelby Lynn. And Dusty Springfield is really fascinating to me. There's some great, great Dusty Springfield tracks out there that I admittedly was not aware of. It was slightly before my time. Maybe more than slightly. Um, also on the stream, the usual thing comes up. People ask, oh, you know, what's your thoughts on in the box versus with a console? I, uh, I entertain that question every once in a while because it's, it's out there. It's out there a lot for whatever reason. Um, my question is, for the people that are opining about the differences... Like, how can you take the opinion of someone seriously when they talk about mixing on a console versus in the box when you know they have not mixed more than a hand, if they have mixed at all on a Neve or an SSL or an API console? But let's just stick to Neves and, and SSLs. Like, yeah, I've, I've mixed a hundred songs on an SSL or an EVR. Maybe it's more than that, somewhere. But I mean, I worked countless sessions recording and making rough mixes on it or real mixes. I know what a console sounds like still. It's a faint memory in a lot of ways. But I don't get the guy who says, like, I can't get a mix inside the box like a console 
when like you've never mixed on a real console or like, you know, one of those vintage consoles, like, what are you talking about? And like hybrid for whatever it's worth. And I've done that too. It's, it's still not the same as a console. Uh, it's like saying digital photography with film emulation is, is anywhere remotely connected to film it's not there's chemicals there's you know plastics and it's it's i don't i guess it's a fun thing to to so you know get on the proverbial soapbox about or whatever is that what it is soapbox shoebox i don't know anyway just mix on whatever the fuck you have and make it work make it happen it's all love. I'm all about the love. I'm hitting the button now. See you. Have a good week. I'll see you Friday.